Welcome back, everyone. Um, I'll just as standard do a quick mic check. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, all good. Cool. Um, so welcome back all. Hopefully you're still there. I can still see quite a healthy participant. Oh, there's my microphone changing. Let me pull the participants back up. Um, so yeah, still see a healthy participant list. So once again, that kind of plea and, and the next part for, for this is um, get involved. Um, it's probably not every day we, we get to ask these type of questions for someone um, with so much experience in the industry and, and definitely on the cutting edge of a, little, of a lot of technology and, and kind of businesses. So um, use this opportunity and, and by all means ask your questions. Um, just in anticipation, obviously, I've, I've come up with a couple of topics that I will kind of throw you away, Yvette, um, once we kind of get started. Um, but definitely at any point. Um, so you can either raise your questions via the, the chat, but obviously we, we're here to kind of have a, a fireside chat, so to speak. So by all means, put your hand up um, and ask your questions, direct kind of things. So without further ado, um, the good news is for this time, I don't have to do a, a full-blown introduction. I get the luxury of, I'll lean onto you for that in a moment, Yvette, to, to do that kind of for us. Um, but I suppose I'll, I'll welcome Yvette Knuth to the stage. Hi, James. So nice to be here. Thank you for joining us. Um, probably the first question, because it always confuses me, what time is it over there? You know, I am currently in uh, the mountain region, so uh, which is which is a very beautiful in the United States. So it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. So you're just starting your day while we're just finishing ours. So uh, you'll be a bit fresher and healthier than us um, by the looks. You know, James, um, I, I uh, grew up in Europe, so I, I'm, I'm always thinking about with all of my friends and family and colleagues there about what time it is in uh, Central European time, London time. And then, of course, with Silicon Valley being a part of my everyday life, I'm, I never know what time zone I'm in. No, just God, interested. Um, so I suppose just before I dive into questions for you, um, and probably I'd shared a little bit of that perspective before thing, and then probably just for the audience as well, I've been moderating for today. Um, this is quite a, an interesting opportunity for me to, to kind of take you through these questions shortly. Um, and probably just to share a little bit with, with both yourself and, and the wider audience on, on probably the topics I'm most likely uh, interested in. Um, so for those that do know me, um, apologies, close your ears for this bit, but for those that don't, um, I work for Virgin Media Road too. Um, my day-to-day -day role is very much in the learning and development space. Um, so I've come from an engineer background um, and now I tend to partner consult with a business on, on some of the big technology changes and, and some of the, what we're now seeing is not just technology, is a lot around mindset and culture as well. Um, so actually this opportunity for me on this fireside chat, I'm gonna drop a few development type questions into here. Um, I'm also a massive advocate for kind of future careers as it's dubbed in a lot of places. Um, I come through into the telecoms industry via an apprenticeship um, and I've, I've been a massive advocate ever since and, and part of the reason for, for joining the SCTE um, as an executive committee member, you know, is just driving a little bit more into the industry. So um, for me personally, this opportunity to kind of ask some of these questions of you um, is going to be pretty cool, if I'm honest. Um, so enough about me. Um, I'm going to kick things off and, and as said, I won't do your introduction for you, um, but just to, to kind of build that picture for anyone that maybe doesn't know you as a household name. Um, we'll start right at the start. How did you get into telecoms? What attracted you to this industry specifically? It's interesting because I actually uh, also engineering background and um, I was heavily into mathematics. And so I was working for the Department of Defense and I was doing alg algorithm development for uh, radar systems and pattern recognition and uh, kind of the predecessors to the current AI work that's happening today. And, um, you know, the cable industry was uh, starting to lay fiber, starting to talk about two way. We were in a broadcast television environment with television being really the, 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 the primary service. And I thought, wow, you know, laying fiber and dense wave division, multiplexing and all of the things we have to do with optics, optics I thought, 
this needs math. And so uh, what a great field to be in. And so that's what really brought me to the industry. And while we've come so far since then, and we continue to innovate. So it's a fantastic field for all of you and us to be in for sure. And then, so was maths always your plan? Or what was plan B? Or what would be plan B if you hadn't got into maths? It really was all centered around uh, te technology, working in mathematics. I loved pattern recognition um, and uh, doing that in, 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 in radar systems, in, in, in SAR, doing that in, in cable. You know, there's so many uh, consistencies across those and uh, applications. But for me, it was always just about doing something fun. And, and I think our industry is absolutely fun. And, and uh, you know, people look at it and say, yeah, it's just connectivity and it's just TV and, and so not the truth, right? We, we are, are major innovators. And I think especially given the times today and the constant change we're going through, we are front and center in everything that's coming up in the future of work and how things are gonna continue to evolve uh, technically for all industries. Very interesting. I, I've got a few questions ready for that and, and kind of next steps and future bit. Um, yeah. But just a little bit more on, on kind of your journey through then. So you, you've joined the industry back when. Um, can you just talk us through the kind of key milestones? You know, what, what has been your career today? I've had the luxury of, of looking through your kind of CV resume. Um, but just for everyone else out there, what's it been? What's your journey been like? What's it involved? So James, I think that uh, for me, everything's been about innovation. I want to be where things are changing. And if they're not changing, then uh, I think all of us should, should uh, make an impact and change them. I worked at, uh, as I said, Lockheed Martin for Department of Defense, but I, I, uh, I went to Time Warner Cable. I was president of Sea Change. I uh, worked at Cablevision. Um, I've been on the vendor and the operator side. Um, I went to work for Cisco. And then when John Chambers uh, retired, he asked me to join him at his venture capital company, working with startups to constantly innovate. And for me, it was Time Warner was looking to do the very first video on demand and interactive TV trial in the world. We had 10,000 people come through our head end just to see what we were doing. That was so great. Then I wanted to say, no, I'd like to make this big scale. Uh, and, 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 uh, and we won an Emmy for being able to say, wow, we made this into a scalable, really uh, uh, deployable system. And uh, then it was all about operational efficiency. So, you know, for me, every single jump in my career has been about how can I be at the forefront of innovation? Super great journey. God, always on the cutting edge. Um, doesn't sound like you sit back ever. Um, two bits I'm going to pick up from that, what you've just said. Um, I'm going to go to the, the kind of technology, the cutting edge side of things, the innovation side of things. So it sounds like you've been involved in, in quite a few, definitely in our industry. Are there any that you missed? Any that you'd have loved to have been part of? Um, you know, it's hard because there are always things happening in parallel. When I picked video and, uh, uh, and, and video had so many aspects, uh, video on demand, uh, CDNs, streaming, uh, the, the user interfaces, there was so much to do there. In parallel, the broadband industry and, and creation of broadband was happening, right? So probably I would have loved to do both of those, right? And, and I would say there's probably never a time when you're working only on one thing when you don't say, wow, I, I want to work on all three of these. But, uh, you know, we have to pick one. No, absolutely. Um, and to, on to the other bit of that, um, you mentioned an Emmy. Um, and once again, having a look through um, a pretty stacked trophy cabinet, if I may say, um, can you just talk us through a, a little bit of recognition that you have received? Uh, well, I, 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 I do have um, a wonderful uh, uh, bunch of industry recognitions. I'm very grateful for that. I would say uh, my, my proudest uh, is probably... Um, a lifetime achievement Emmy for all of the work that uh, I've done in the television industry. And what I think is particularly exciting about that is, look, we're engineers. This is an SCTE conference, right? Uh, so, so all of us are, are deep into technology. 
but this is an award that goes to movie stars that are uh, beautiful and, and walk down the red carpet. And I'm pretty proud of the fact that we engineers can get the exact same Emmy for doing all of the behind the scenes work that we do. And uh, I think that's wonderful. Uh, probably IEEE engineer of the, uh, of the year was the most uh, you know, deep engineering uh, pride for me, but uh, all of them are wonderful. And I'm just grateful for this industry for giving everybody so many wonderful recognitions. Uh, sounds pretty cool. Uh, but there were pretty good feelings when you found out you were kind of due to receive each and every one of those. True. Yes. Um, so outside of the awards and, and once again on the, the cutting edge of kind of innovation, what's been the highlight of your career so far? So outside of that recognition, you know, what has been the highlight? What has been the proudest moment for you? Um, I, I think the proudest moment for me, and I hope it's the same for all of you uh, participating here, it's, it has to be the journey, you know, it's not the, it's not the award and afterwards, it, it's, it's, it's going through and being a part of something that's transformational for everybody's lives, right? If you look at COVID and you think of how our industry was, was we, couldn't have, we couldn't have done what we did without our industry being there for everybody. And it's every single step along the way, how we as a team can unify and, 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 uh, and change the world. And, and that journey is, is uh, it, it's just invigorating to me. And, and, uh, and that's constant innovation, constantly doing things different. Uh, you know, we might've had all five-year plans as to how it is that we're gonna upgrade our infrastructures. And we had to do that in six months because of uh, situations that, 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 uh, that were in front of us. So. Uh, that journey of one after another in technology innovation, uh, I'm proud of and uh, loved every minute of it. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. And then I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot with this one a little bit. I noticed that you kind of joined partway through um, Craig's presentation. Um, any highlights, anything that, that kind of jumps out for you? Well, I mean, I, I'm particularly interested in what Craig talked about with uh, automation. It's something that's very close to 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 my heart, and uh, and I think that uh, I I think that automation is the future in our industry. If we look at how we run the network, if we look at how we troubleshoot, if we look at how we do customer experience uh, uh, measuring, how we do care, uh, every aspect is going to change, and it's going to automate. I'm particularly excited about artificial intelligence in finding patterns and things that we can't find ourselves. So I think the first step of automation is taking how we know uh, how to troubleshoot or how to install or how to how to uh, uh, run our our networks, and then and then we uh, automate by taking what's in, in, in our experience and and uh, and making that happen uh, in an automated way. But then on top of that, you throw AI and some of the tooling that's out there today to, to, to take it to the next level. I think we're going to see more and more and more innovation along those lines. And we're going to focus less on, uh, on, on doing things like fault resilience by saying, let's just put everything in there twice. We're going to do it with real intelligence and, and optimize in totally new ways. And I'm really excited about that. Um, the other thing that uh, he touched on, or at least at the end there, was a little bit about security. I think security is changing completely uh, from where it was. We always built walls. Um, I'm going to put in malware protection and not let anything in. I'm going to put in firewalls. Nobody can come in, right? And and uh, and I think that now we look at security in totally different ways. We're, we're going to look at workload protections and how do you see something flowing through the system in order to catch things that, that you've never seen before. One of the startups I work with, Versec, is, 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 is looking at that. And, and, and it's, uh, it's turning things upside down from, from uh, the way that we looked at protection or the way that we looked at, at, at satisfying our customers in, in totally new ways. Um, I think that much, much, much innovation to happen on that front, James. I'm sure you agree in your job, right? Absolutely. Really interesting. You mentioned kind of security. One of the, the, the biggies I'm, I'm talking at the moment is cybersecurity and, and that side of things and actually automation as well from a, 
you know, a VMO2 point of view. So to actually, I'm, I'm going to chuck one of the, the, the controversial questions that comes out of all of these when you talk automation and, and robots taking over and all of that. What do you see as the impact on kind of that, that work? We've got a lot of defined roles that don't rely on automation, very manual roles, and, and you know, a lot of what's out there from a work point of view. Um, and obviously, the more and more automation we bring in, we start to speed up processes, remove the human element out of them. How do, how do we lean forward into that from a, a change point of view? Because sometimes it can be kind of construed as negative that we're all losing our jobs to robots kind of thing. Uh, I think that, it, you know, artificial intelligence is going to change the work environment. There's no doubt about that. But if you look at creation of automation, it is going to be created. And so there are a whole bunch of, 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 of companies that are automating things, but the expertise is what of what, how, and, and, and how to implement that automation sits with us. It sits with us in this industry that know the context of what and how this needs to be done. So it's an amazing opportunity for all of us in the industry to create that next generation. Did, did farming tools change the farming industry? It did. Does that mean that nobody has a job because so many people were farmers? No, everybody has different types of jobs. So our jobs will evolve, the industry will change, but I think that for, for the next, call it 10 years, how can we automate? How can we use all of this technology and know how to best implement it? That's all of us. And the ones that will make a difference, make an impact, have career growth out of it are the ones that are gonna embrace that innovation and implement it as opposed to the ones that'll say, no, I'm holding on to my uh, spreadsheet based uh, every day check off list and do it the way I've always done it. Um, I would highly encourage you to be the one to lead the effort instead. Make your name in it. Absolutely. And then I will be coming back to some of that kind of career advice stuff. So I've got a few questions kind of lined up around that. So um, before we kind of get into it, to, to kind of the crux of that, um, you mentioned a little bit about one of the, the kind of startups you work with. Can you just tell us a little bit more about um, kind of JC2 Ventures? Um, you know, what do the company do? What What's the vision? What's the purpose of JC2? Well, I get the pleasure of working with John Chambers, uh, who I assume everybody knows. Uh, he's considered the godfather of Silicon Valley, uh, was the CEO and chairman of Cisco. And when John was at Cisco, he did 180 acquisitions. He was always, always focused on winning, being first, being the most innovative company. If, uh, if I can't build it, uh, I'll buy it, but we will always be first. And that attitude is uh, really, really founded on constant, constant forward movement and constant innovation. So when he left Cisco and created JC2 Ventures as a, a venture capital company, it's, uh, it's based very much on leading market shifts, on mentoring startups. We have 20 startups we work with every day. And uh, you know how startups are, you know, there's always uh, ups and downs and left turns and right turns. So we mentor through each of those. I do the engineering side. So I work very closely with all the engineering groups. And, uh, and so we're different. We're different because when uh, a company, for example, says, you know, uh, we, we need to focus on scale. I've been there, quality uh, uh, or whatever, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to help with that. So it's really differentiating the way that we work with startups to say, uh, how can we bring uh, a lot of lifetime experience to help these companies grow and, and really, really make sure that we uh, have a high success factor in, 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 their, in their industry success. So I love it. I get to work with all of the different uh, areas that are up and coming and, uh, and, and also breadth of, of different topics from security to customer experience to, uh, you know, um, uh, to, to, to clean energy all the way to uh, clean food and, and, and eating crickets. It's uh, super fun. It seems pretty uh, spread everywhere. How do you kind of keep up with all of that in, in so many different areas? Um, obviously, a, a lot of us specialize and, and we definitely do, but it sounds like you've, you've got kind of interests all over the place. How do you keep up with that? I don't know. Don't we all? Don't you, don't you when, when you know everything about your field, you think, gosh, I wish I knew more about pick your favorite, right? And so yeah. 
Uh, at least that's the way that I've always thought. You know, I I I I, I want to know more about everything that's up and coming, and and so many of them are merging. It's so interesting. Uh, if you take kind of the base technologies and you take what's really hot. Okay, um, you know, I'm really interested in AI and ML. I'm really interested in cyber technologies and what's happening in quantum computing. And, and you know, then you take the industry shifts like IoT and what's happening with the change in supply chain and enterprise networks. And um, I can take all of those and put them together in, into solutions. So we have to be more broad to really understand everything that's going on out there. And that's what I love in the startup world. And I think that uh, the other thing is having this industry context. We can all be smart on technology, but we all know, understand what's happening in, in cable infrastructure, in 5G, in, in uh, you know, different things in, in, in SMB needs and enterprise needs. And so we're uniquely able to put all of that together into what can really make an impact. So I would say, uh, it's not a challenge to be broad. I think it's a must, right? Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to stick on the theme of the whole startup piece and, and probably just a little bit more now, a, a tiny future focus. Um, so out of those startups that you kind of already work with, um, any first of all, any that we'd know, any that we're about to know, any that are about to hit the scene in a big way, you can you tell us what types of startups you're currently working with? Okay, James, I had the a funnest day last week. I got to uh, participate in ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. And, uh, you know, that's not something we get to do every day because one of our startups, Sprinkler, um, went IPO. And so uh, amazing accomplishment, great team, super strong company, um, really uh, just insightful CEO and, and the whole team has, has come so far. Seeing uh, companies like Sprinkler take that long journey and making it all the way to AP, uh, uh, IPO. And um, I'll give you an example of, of what they do. Uh, you know, we used to get a survey and figure out are our customers happy? And so a month later you realize they're not happy. Well, a month has passed, right? So they do social listening social action, everything about customer experience management to know what are your customers thinking right now about you. And then you can take action on it in, in, in modern marketing, modern care. And uh, it's all about knowing what's happening right now, being able to shift quickly and also knowing what your competitors are doing and what do they think about them. Um, uh, co company uh, ASAP, uh, which, does, which does artificial intelligence in call centers, we have good agents, we have bad agents, we have new agents, and uh, and we segment agents, and 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 so being able to learn from all of them, transcribe, put artificial intelligence on all this data, and be able to help agents say, hey, I know that problem, I've seen it a bunch of times. I think that you should suggest maybe you should talk about this, try to do that, and uh, again, this is where all of our experience comes in to help guide that. Um, Another really great example, um, uh, in, in security, uh, there's a company I work with, Safe Security, to score, are you doing well in security? Don't we all say, do I have enough things? I have 115 different security products. Um, are they working? Are they doing well? Am I better today, better yesterday? So to be able to take inside out, outside in, people, and look at how I'm doing today, real time to say, am I, am I safe, right? Am I, am I safe enough? You know, do I have the right risk factors? So many, um, that's just a couple of examples from, from totally different angles. And I could just go on and on to talk about um, things like how to optimize the next, uh, um, the next generation of understanding how people interact with your applications and what they want and need. Uh, there, there's some really amazing technology out there, James. And, and to, to everybody here listening, I have to say, innovate, innovate, innovate. Because especially when you work with startups, you get to influence that product roadmap, right? Because startups aren't amazing without you, right? It's all about that partnership of figuring out how to change the world together. It's, it's, it's super fun. It's worth it. So on that then, and, and all these different startups, what makes a good startup? Is it just a good idea? What what do you look for from a good startup or a good innovator, so to speak? 
someone that used um, to work I think with? That you have to start with a market shift. Um, you can build a great product and there's another great product and another great product solving something that's already been solved. That's not our area of focus. So we really look at where is a market shift happening? How can you own that market shift and be number one or two in that market shift? And uh, so if we look at market shifts today, uh, we, we, have, uh, we have an entire ecosystem of changing the way that we interface, changing the way that we collaborate, um, uh, the way that work is going to, to end up. We're still uh, talking about daily. Is it going to be back to the office? Is it going to be in a different way? Is it going to be worldwide? Um, how, do we, how do we best uh, whiteboard, communicate, talk? You know, we're doing this on Zoom, but that's only... A, a very small beginning, right? To where, to how it is that everything is going to change. And so you wanna take that market shift and you wanna say, I want to lead that. Not do the same thing that was done yesterday, but lead that shift. Our industry is front and center in that. And so, um, so I would say that's the starting point. You have to have great people, great technology, and, um, and, and you have to be able to, to, to adapt and adjust to get over the, the inevitable hurdles that will come along the way. And then, so I suppose that as well. So for those maybe on the call that are looking to, to be that next innovator, that next startup kind of thing, um, and just a little bit of advice now. So all this technology kind of swarming around us, how, how do we embrace that? How do we learn to innovate? What, what would be that kind of first step in you know, solving that next problem? So I would say on a, on a, on a career level, the, the, the one advice that I would give to, to, to any of my peers is embrace that, embrace that market shift, embrace that change. It doesn't matter if you're doing installs, if you're running a technology group, if you're in charge of data center and cloud, um, look at what's happening with things like the intelligent edge. Uh, super uh, super transformative, right? Um, I have two companies, Lilac and Pensando, that are really looking to, to uh, how, do we, how do we move all of the intelligence to that edge? So we talk about things like Mac and, 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 uh, and, and that's great, but, but what can we do to, to, uh, to try it, to, to, uh, to, to, to help innovate with it? What's going to run at the edge? Is it going to be <clears throat> virtual firewalls, virtual applications? How is it that we charge? How is it that we uh, that 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 we manage that edge? Who do, who do we pick? If you wait for that to, to to that innovation to come from somewhere else, then you're just going to be the person to install it. We talked about automation. Nobody can automate like the person that's on the front line understanding every single problem because every solution that'll come to you, you'll say you don't understand my world. Instead of instead say, let me have you understand my world. And if you can solve that problem, I'd love to innovate with you. And that mind shift is really hard. Many times when I've been on the vendor side, it's a push, 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 please, I, you know, innovate, innovate. When you're on the operator side, it's like, hey, my network needs to be stable. I can't just throw things in there all the way. There's a balance that really makes sense. And I would uh, really recommend to everybody embrace the balance because one party can't do it without the other and the partnership's pretty magical and and i think there is not a field i can't think of where innovation isn't appropriate no, absolutely really interesting stuff um i'm gonna ask you the question around game changers so uh look forward a couple of years oh god as far as we we're safe to look forward with the the rate of change and everything but um, obviously mentioning stuff like AI, but anything else that you'd want to call out as a, a kind of game changer, um, you know, whether it's our industry or wider? I think quantum it? computing is going to be uh, a fascinating game changer. Blockchain and the things that we're seeing with, uh, with, with, with Bitcoin and, and, and uh, you know, the way that, uh, that, that we uh, have complete uh, cashless environments and, and, and the change of, of, of the way that, uh, that, that, that money works. I think IOT is only in its beginning. Uh, uh, I mentioned smart supply chain. Um, uh, there's a company I work with, Cloudleaf, and, and uh, taking everything, uh, again, just coming back to COVID because it's been such a part of our life for the last year, 
uh, measuring temperatures of, of, of uh, deliveries of, of medications and how much they, they, they shake uh, in their transport and, and making sure that we can monitor everything down to the deepest level. And how do we build the infrastructure for that? Well, that's us, right? So we, we have to think uh, in very new ways. And, and I'm really excited about where that's going to take us over the next years. And I think that whatever we lay out today is guaranteed not to be exactly the way it's going to be. So, so that's where that collaboration and, uh, and, 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 and unified um, thinking and innovation makes such an impact. Uh, we're really, really excited about it. AI, obviously, um, the one I can't, I can't uh, stress enough, James, is, is, is customer experience. Uh, it is well proven that, that even today, customers are making their decision based on being happy with their, with their company, as opposed to even it being the best. If I want to buy something and it's easy for me to buy it, I'll just buy it because it's easy and I'm happy buying it this way, as opposed to looking at 20 different vendors and trying to get that best price. So things have shifted from being even the best product to making your customers happy. And we have to think that way, that does my job, whatever it is, and we're engineers, so uh, uh, it's not the way we're used to thinking. We're in the background, I would say, no, we're in the front ground now because we, in the forefront, because we are, are uh, responsible for, for a big piece of customer satisfaction and customer experience. So um, those are some I'm really excited about. Oh, awesome. Um, some really interesting bits there. So um, just on the flip side, so we, we kind of just questioned before, we, we kind of looked at that startup, that innovator. Um, and, and someone like myself, just, just for a moment, I work for a big um, cable operator, um, nowhere near that innovator slash cutting edge of technology. But you know, for someone, I'm 12 years in the industry now, which seems like a, an absolute massive amount of time, and it's changed so much in that short period. So for someone that's kind of part of that big player, that's not necessarily there to, to be cutting edge and innovating kind of thing, how does someone like me, I'm not saying I would, but, you know, how does the, the average person keep abreast of all this kind of change? How do we keep on top of it, the, the kind of rate that our industry is going to move in? Any kind of tips? Yes. Um, actually, <clears throat> I think this is a, a really, really important question because <clears throat> having been in, in, in this industry and being on, on the operator side, uh, your metrics are about um, uptime, uh, mean time between repair, uh, uh, you know, everything about solidity of what it is that you're running today. And so it's kind of beaten into us, we become very good at the space that we're in. And it's something we have to look out for because it can be a trap too, right? To say, I'm so good at what I do every day. I'm the best. And, and this, this, it never breaks. And, um, and, and, and then aren't we the best people to take it to the next level? We are, but we're so busy doing what we do. So first of all, from a personal perspective, we have to always keep up with what's happening on the outside. It's important to our company and it's important to our own careers, right? You don't wanna be stuck one day to say, I'm the best uh, uh, Fortran programmer that exists because I've been running this Fortran, you know, like, okay, well that's, you know, 30 years old, you know, it, you, 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 you need to, to move things forward. So what I would say is if you, um, let's take, do something really simple, right? If you do the same thing every day and you, you put that into a script, right? Um, and you run the script, everybody will be thrilled with you because they'll say, oh, look, wow, you made something run three times as fast because you put it into a script. What's the difference between that and playing with a startup to do something that turns everything upside down and makes it run better? The key is don't wait until it's something where you have to take it off the shelf work with a company that will work with you where you can be part of the innovation. Great for your resume. The company will love it. Wow, you helped innovate this and you picked this startup. So um, as far as what's happening, uh, it's very easy to align with Silicon Valley. Anybody here is welcome to email me and say, hey, Yvette, what's this or what's that? I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to talk about them. That's what I do all day long and it's my pleasure, right? Uh, and, and I don't work for the startups. It's, for me, it's just wonderful to see them succeed. 
Um, so, so we have uh, events like this, uh, you know, where you, James, are, 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 are talking about a bunch of different companies and things. There are, uh, you know, all of the, the, the trade magazines and articles and, and, and uh, everything that, that, we can, that, that we can learn from. It's really important just to stay broad. And then when you find something of interest, then go deep, right? No big things that are happening and pick a few to go deep on. Uh, really, I think it's, it's, it's what makes a career. Um, you know, James, you had said that you wanted to talk about what do we do, right? Well, how do we show up, right? All, I'm just hidden in the, in the data center. Nobody even knows my name. Well, how can somebody know your name? First of all, do great things and do them within the, the confines of, of your boundaries. I have to be, have, have this, this, this uptime. I'm gonna get fired if I don't keep my, my network running stable. Great, what can I innovate and, and not cross that line? Pick your partners to do that with. And, and, uh, and, and we have some great uh, companies that are completely devoted to this industry that, you know, uh, to sidetrack for one second, I love this industry. It's, it's small enough, we all know each other, right? We all see each other, you know, okay, see you at Anga, see you at the, the you know, SCTE event, maybe this time, not this time in person, but, um, and, and so we, we have trusted partners. Pick your trusted partner and innovate with them. And it's important to your own career growth because if you do that and you make an impact, uh, people will know the person that's in that data center all day. Um, what you're doing, James, involved in SCTE, uh, uh, you know, being a moderator on panels, speak on panels. Um, that's how I made my career. I was just an engineer. I started publishing. Uh, I started writing articles for, for the, 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 the industry, uh, you know, publications. Um, I started speaking at events and, and, and my companies loved it because we were leading and, and we were innovating and doing great things. And, and we, we got to show them off and make a name for our companies too. I don't know if that's um, answering your question specific enough. I'm, I'm obviously pretty passionate about on this one. Oh, no. it, it's good to see the, the kind of passion and the energy come through because it's, yeah, it, it's less written advice. It's more just that it's real good to see someone have that such a great vibe around kind of career, the industry and stuff like that. So kind of gives you that you, you're in the right place kind of feel. Um, no, that's that's really kind of cool. Well, I'm buying sports engineers, James. So, so I mean, you know, we and 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 we 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 tend to uh, we tend to accept us being in the background because that's just, you know we picked a field that's that's by default uh, you know not not always sometimes we get to work on the on the the the, the customer facing side, but but that should not limit us. I'm, I'm I'm telling you, we we are we are in the best seat for all the innovations coming up. We are in the best place for the the, the industry shifts that we that we have to lead. So I would say just just for everyone to just do it, just go out there and and pick a partner so that you can have your safety net and and you can have your influence and it will be fun. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to chuck one more question your way and then I'll give you an opportunity to have a quick drink if you need. And I will reach out for, for kind of if there's any wider audience questions, conscious that I've been quite greedy and, and done all of my own. I've, I've not seen any coming through, so I will just give that moment. But um, so one of the bits just for me is uh, I do a lot of work around kind of the, the attraction of talent into the industry. So whether that's apprenticeships, internships, kind of graduate graduates and, and bringing them in the, the kind of future of, of what we do. And a lot of the time it's that fresh thinking. It's that they're not stuck in old ways, whatever it is. It brings that new perspective a lot of the time. Um, but let's say someone coming into the industry or considering that, um, that kind of sound bite for someone that's kind of on the fence around whether telecoms or, or kind of the IT industry is the future. Any advice for that person? Well, I, I um, first of all, thank you for, for, for doing that um, for, for, for all of us. I think it's really important to, to help uh, bring talent into our industry and also bring diverse talent into our industry. And I, uh, I likewise focus a lot on that. Uh, I am the uh, co-founder and vice chairman of the SCTE Foundation. And uh, we spend a lot of time on this topic, which is uh, showing um, talent that this is an amazing industry to be in. Um, and, and I think that we've done a lot to shift the perception and understanding of what, um, what our industry does. And uh, look again, we're 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 foundational to 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 to, to the future, uh, the future of the way that we communicate, work, 
connect. Um, and I wouldn't say that that even focuses just on the consumer. It focuses on SMB. It focuses on enterprise uh, across the board and in, in so many applications. It's not just connectivity. It's, it's the entire ecosystem of, of, of collaboration. So it, the more we can get that message out, that is a fun place to be. And, and uh, that is a great place to grow your career, to learn, to lead. And I think it's important for us to all talk, think, and, 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 uh, and, and get that message out to, to colleges and graduates uh, that it's a wonderful field to be in. One of the things that I think is a great advantage of our industry is we're very welcoming. Um, we just have we just have the best uh, uh, collegiate in, in environment, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, so many of our businesses started with family businesses and, and, and it's, uh, and it shows through. And, and so it's, it's also, I think that's, that makes us really incredibly special and, uh, and hopefully all of us will continue to just hold our arms out to welcome people in. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to stick on that theme for a minute, because once again, reading through your kind of resume and, and those that you're involved in, um, from a diversity point of view, um, and probably for our industry, right, we're on a massive kind of, you know, key focus, not just our industry, but abroad, but I see you, you're well involved in a lot of kind of, you know, trying to attract a, a more diverse kind of um, into our industry um can you just talk me more about kind of what that's kind of consisted of who you've kind of worked with and and what any kind of once again sound bites or, or support messages would be for you know what we do around some of those challenges you know james i'm not very i'm not very proud of how i started in that journey um i was the only woman uh in in a man's world when i when i came into uh a, a, the technical world period not even our industry and um and again, we had this wonderful environment. I was very welcomed. And so I never wanted to talk about diversity. I just said, hey, I'm here to work. I wanna be known on my engineering skills, not because I'm female. So I, I, I didn't talk about it for a long time. And, and I didn't wanna talk about it because I wanted to be, it's about being good. It's not about being this or that. And I think it, it, it's wrong because it's not, we have to open the door for people that aren't like us. I was just one of the guys, it was great. But that doesn't mean you have to be one of the guys to be able to join our industry. And we owe it to people that aren't like us to be able to make it welcoming and, and inclusive for them too. So I've become very comfortable talking about it now. And I think that that was a big mistake. And I, and I, I look at people's personalities and I think, um, okay, this person doesn't wanna talk about sports at the beginning of the, of, of the meeting. And so I have a strong personality. So, so I say, hey, everybody in the room, today, this person is gonna talk about the opening chatter before we talk about you know, our deep work. Always nice to have two minutes of chatter, right? Today, it's not gonna be the traditional topic. And I don't care if we talk about shoes, I love shoes, right? Um, uh, you know, We can talk about anything. And, and some people wanna talk about a uh, culture or, or a food or something. How is that not wonderful? I just think we all have to be open to say, let's change the way that my conversation would go to a conversation of you. I'll learn from it and think about it from that point forward. The person that never spoke now feels a part of the chummy conversation at the beginning of the meeting and, 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 and feels a part, more part, more comfortable participating in the meeting because we can exclude people if only three people laugh out loud and have the opening of the meeting one way. I think all of us just have to open our minds a little bit to something that makes us even a little uncomfortable to say, why don't you pick a topic for us to banter about for a minute before we go into our, our, our talk. And it ends up being such a beautiful thing and it opens up to people that aren't like me and, 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 and I learn. And, and, uh, and in the end, the performance of the company, the outcome of the product um, will, will be better. So I'm, I, I've, I've, really, uh, I've, I've really come to embrace the comfort of, 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 of the importance of, of thinking this way every day in, in how you interview, how much do we close ourselves up in, in, in not looking for people that act just like me and you? Um, 
or, or hopefully not me and you, because hopefully we're very different and, and we can still have a great, uh, you know, work environment. It's, it's important, has a great outcome. And I think, um, I think I'd highly just encourage all of us to think that way. Uh, just because this topic is important to me, just just based on on my own journey, I, I, I'll, I'll uh, if I can just plug one thing to everybody. Um, when I uh, came into this industry, I had wonderful, wonderful mentors and sponsors. They were all men because uh, there were no women. Um, doesn't matter if you're, you know, what your what your uh, ethnicity is or, or or your gender is. Uh, a lot of people talk about coaching and mentoring, have mentorship programs, but the key is sponsorship to me. Um, it's, it's not about coaching and talking to someone, hey, go, go, go do that. Don't do that anymore. Um, you know, that was bad. It's important. But, but then there's mentorship, working with someone. Let's work on, on, on what we need to do for your career pro progression. Um, wonderful gift to have a mentor. But how many people sponsor somebody that's of a different color, uh, gender, background? Um, we have to move these people up into our industries. And that takes sponsorship. That instead of talking to them or with them, you have to talk about them, right? And so um, I would encourage everyone, if you see somebody and believe in them, sponsor them, talk about them, help bring them up. And if we do it, everybody for just one person, think of how we can shift the numbers in 12 months. It's, it's uh, all right, I've talked enough about it. it uh, obviously another passionate topic. No, no, it, it's really nice to hear. I, I, I take a lot of kind of that kind of intrinsic value from seeing you know people around succeed. So no, I hear that and, and definitely hits close to home. So um, really good to see throughout. Um, I'm gonna, Pause there for a second, give you an opportunity if you want to grab a quick drink, conscious we spoke solidly for, for a good period of time. Um, so I've just seen a question come through on the chat, but I wanted to just put that reach out. We, we've still got, you know, good attendance. Um, and for those that are kind of listening in, obviously I've, I've, I've got to bombarded you with a load of different questions and topics and stuff. So nice to play out to the audience. Um, anything from you, um, by all means, raise your hand, come ask that question direct, but you know, we've got a great opportunity here that's some brilliant insight already gathered Yvette so um anyone kind of out there still you know watching listening to this any questions um Mark I've just seen you put one in the chat do you want to ask it directly or would you like me to read that one out for you pause for a second see if it's a mute thing um Mark, I see the question here, it, and, and um, it's wonderful. Uh, I, I appreciate the caring, and, and I think you're right. The, the, the more that we work in this great industry, we, we, we feel more and more of a need to, to help expand that and bring young people and bring diverse people into this industry. So thanks for that. And um, so this is, this is one of the reasons that I... Uh, am involved in the SCTE Foundation. I would love to create more programs with all of you as to how and 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 what can we do to bring um, maybe internships, um, uh, maybe even even if they're unpaid internships. Right. The big issue for these young people is to get that first job. Right. Once you have the first job, you get a second job, but, oh, I have no experience, you know? And so we forget what, what's in their heads. If we can create, um, we've been bantering around uh, maybe an AI internship or, uh, you know, something to give people experience. I'm open to ideas. I'm happy, you know, for anyone to send me emails. Um, I, I'd love to help. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm all in and I appreciate you being all in. And if, if we don't do it together, I'm happy to watch your journey. It's just all great. And, and if you're stuck on, on how and what, how to find people or what to do, um, super happy to follow up on that. It's important. Wow. Sounds really good. God, I like the sound of an AI internship. Um, I may be interested. We will say um right a couple of questions and actually some really cool ones so i'm just going to read them out they've been sent to me kind of direct on the chat so i'll just kind of run through them um okay. so who do you look for who do you look up to for inspiration and mentorship 
Um, I have uh, uh, the gift of so many people that have been wonderful mentors and I look up to a lot of people and I think that we have to constantly be learning and and uh, realize when we when we stumble and 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 you know how, how to get out of that so I would I would say um, mentors have always been very important to me when I came into the industry Jim Luddington um, who some of you might know uh, he, he, he did so much to, to just introduce me to people and he would take me to the, the big trade shows at the time and, and, uh, and just, and, and, and just give me the chance of opening up my communications with people at different companies. Then it was up to me to keep it up. He didn't sit there and baby me along the way and say, you know, did you follow up with George, Jim and Mary? He, um, but he gave me that, that chance so um, I'm always grateful for that. John Chambers, who I work with, who is a legend in the industry, teaches me every day, and and uh, and and I and and I always listen. Right, um, most of his lessons are about mistakes he made. Right, he very openly talk about what happened during uh, the 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 uh, you know 2000 2008 uh, uh, you know uh, big crisis in business, and so I would say. Um, uh, you know, read books, podcasts, whatever it is, uh, the, the people that are, are my mentors that I look up to are always happy to share. And uh, I don't know, James, I think, you, you, you know, I look up to everybody, you can teach me um, all of our all of our peers, we, we learn from each other. It's great. Awesome. Um, and so you touched on just there, and actually, it leads quite nicely into the next question also submitted. Um, you spoke about that, uh, I think the whole failure point of view and, and kind of the lessons learned from John, but so for you, what is the one decision you wish you didn't make or hadn't made? Um, I, I can't, I can't think of one, although I'm sure there's 10 uh, or, or 20 that'll come to me as soon as, as soon as we, we wrap up um, because we all make mistakes. Um, I, I think the, 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 the biggest thing for me is, is when I was younger, um, you try to hide from your mistakes, right? You, you try to be, uh, you, you try to just be good, right? And, and I think that one of the things that I really embrace is when you make a mistake, just own it, right? Own it. And, and don't hide from it. And, and, and if you say, Yvette, did, did you really do that? And I'll say, yes, oh, wasn't that awful, you know? And, and fail fast, right? So um, I'm, I'm uh, on a lot of boards. I talk to a lot of companies. When I work on projects and my projects, I always say, what's our, what's our failure rate comfort? What's our risk comfort, right? Because in some things like, like ethics, you, you, you don't want, you don't want to take any risks, right? But in other things, you want to take great risk. And if you understand your, your, your failure comfort, then you can just fail fast as opposed to dwelling on it, you know? And, um, and, and so, although I have many failures and we could spend all of our time talking about those, uh, I think it's about what do you do when that happens? How do you recover? And think about it. You can, decide and think and plan talking back about innovation until you're 90% comfortable. Okay. Now I'm going to do it. Or you could be 70% comfortable, fail a lot and get there in half the time because you just iterate it. Um, and, and so I don't see failure to be a bad thing. It's, it's, uh, it's what you do with it. So quite nice to hear that I've, I've had the fail fast kind of, yeah, that, that whole bit from a, an internal work. So it's really nice to hear it kind of outside of that and, and know that it's a much wider approach. So no, that's definitely cool. And then just on that, then let's on, on your failure. We'll come off that one for a second. Um, so from a startup point of view, um, obviously this is going to be a really challenging space, but how do you motivate your startups and, and those that you work with to keep going when conflicts and, and setbacks and stuff. So, you know, how do you approach that? I have to say that when you work in the startup world, that motivation is, is, is so prevalent in, in, in startups. It, it's more of a question in larger companies, right? In larger companies, um, many times we will see less, 
uh, less risk taking, we'll see. Um, you know, I'm 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 worried about I'm worried about this. There's a con there's a constant fear of either my 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 role or or or, or my 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 metrics or whatever it might be. And so when when you fail, it's uh, it's drastic, right? In startups, there's a fire every day with something, right? Um, you know, we have to focus on revenue growth. No, we have to focus on the product. No, this happened and that happened. You have so few people that that everybody's responsibility is so massive. And I think that you 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 see a lot more of the motivation of, yeah, but we're solving world peace. And so we're we're gonna get to that world peace and we've got peace in one in one city, and isn't that great? So um, you have to look at your successes and, and in startups, every one of those is a big celebration, you know, um, every win. And, and I think we should all have that attitude. Every win is so important that, that, that when, when, when you fall, get back up because the goal's still there and, and it's a mindset and it might be a difficult mindset to get to, but once you're over it, you never go back. It's, it's, you don't want to go back to, to, to worrying all the time. You just say no. And, and also think about how much more valuable you are to your company, to the industry. Um, when you, when you can overcome every failure and have a great outcome anyway, when you can get there faster because you go with a different approach, um, it's, 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 uh, it's addictive, you know, when, when you have that, 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 that attitude, uh, in a, in a positive way, you know, it's a pretty powerful attitude and, and yeah, I can definitely see the benefits and, and the pros of, so no, that, that's really cool. Um, I did see a hand up. I don't know if it was an accident. I'm going to re if it stays just at your hand up again, if you do have a question, um, it may well have been an accident because I need to go back off. Um, so, I will just see if it does raise again. You have to ask um, me questions. You can't not ask me any questions. It's important. I know it's it's. We've had a few come through, but yeah. So, Rian, was that a question? Um, did you want to ask, or was that a a, a mistaken hand raise? You can drop it in the chat if you don't want to speak. Now I can see a couple now coming up. So I think Tony, can you help unmute? Um, and yeah, Rian, over to you. Yeah. Oh, I can unmute here. Okay. We can hear you. I'm I'm uh, I'm impressed by uh, by the by the answers and the presentation. Uh, I, I had a look at the uh, at the website of the company. Um, I'm I I'm listening to to a, a human resource manager uh, more than than a CTO, uh, and that's an interesting combination. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was just wondering how you how you come into that role um, because you you have a wide knowledge of the industry and and, I, and technology. So yes, you can be a good consultant of of advising and and everything else. But the the, the human factor uh, is uh, seems to me very important. What are your thoughts on that? No, oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. And and I think that. You know, typically when you when when you come from backgrounds like like ours and you're and you're an engineer, especially me, you know, I spent all my time in my in my cave, right? Uh, uh, you know, doing my math algorithms. I can get better performance if I relook at this and coding and and. Uh, but uh, but I'll I'll tell you what I was doing radar algorithms and uh, and I was trying to figure out how to uh, you know get better performance. And, uh, and then we'd get to go to the, I worked on the Apache helicopter. We'd get to go fly to Yuma, Arizona and see the helicopter fly and figure out where we want to put tanks and things to, 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 uh, uh, to figure out how it is that we're going to run. And so if you're deeply into technology, slowly you get opportunities to move from that to the implementation of it. And that works around people. And then you get so excited about what you do that you get opportunities to talk about it. And um, like I said earlier, it was very important to me. I'm never gonna be known if I don't publish or, 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 or talk or participate in events like this. So uh, that didn't make me a, a fantastic speaker. It just meant I was interested and I highly recommend it because being able to communicate about what you do and talk about it, first of all, it's fun because what we're doing is fun. And, um, 
And it does change the world. I ended up moving into product management because I thought, well, I wanted to find more of this product. I ended up moving into general management. I've done, I've done, uh, you know, so much in, in owning the business as opposed to building the product. It's all great, but it's, it's a journey. And, and I think it's, it's hopefully an inspiration to all engineers that we can go anywhere from this. People say that, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's the, the, only the communication fields that, you know, tend to be out there. I, I beg to differ. We can do it too. No, I, I, I think it gives you the ability to go to the overview of things instead of keeping, keeping always in the details of the uh, distinct uh, subject. If you, if you manage to get to the overview, um, it, it's far more easier to talk about it than to have a, a future view on, uh, on the industry, in, especially in our fast developing uh, industry. It's a really good advice. Really good advice to everybody. Focus on the outcome. Talk about the outcome. We don't need to go through. And then, you know, when 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 we all get together, we can talk about all the 50 things that are technically interesting about how we got there. But we have to we have to keep our mind on the outcome because we have so many things that we are and can achieve. Um, good advice. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, thank you for giving me the floor, uh, James. But uh, uh, again, uh, thank you very much uh, for. Uh, for your presentation. It was uh, so far very interesting to listen to. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I had another hand up. So Chris, and I've just seen you submit your question. So if you, you want to ask it yourself, um, by all means, it's actually a question close to my heart as well. So I'm, I'm more than happy to hear this answer as well. So um, do you want to come off mute and ask that or would you rather I just read through it? I'll, I'll give you the choice. I think you should be able to speak now. Uh, I was muted. Can you hear me now? I can indeed. Yes. Okay. Um, can I take that screen down for a second? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I typed my question out and I can't read it now. <laughs> but uh, the question I would like to ask is how can we encourage senior management to take training more seriously? and spend more money on training. Everyone agrees that training is important, but uh, as someone who is involved in training, when it comes to paying for training, management does not find the money they should. I'm not just talking about to the SCTE, I'm talking about in general. Uh, any comments on that, please? Uh, I, I do, and, I, and I'm glad you brought it up because I think that um, <clears throat> so much, so many times we focus on, we need to bring somebody in that understands something. Well, again, going back to the automation discussion we had, we can bring in a bunch of experts on automation, but the people that know what to automate and how to automate and what needs to be solved are the people that are in the company right now. And so being able to expand training is so important and, and everything we said about keeping current. So I'm with you 100%. Um, I think that what's important is, is to, under, to, to be able to quantify, uh, again, outcome, right? It's all about the outcome. We have to be able to articulate to management, if we do this training, this is the outcome that you will see that we expect. This is the goal that we have. And um, Sometimes it comes across that we're asking for training just because of training, because we think, oh, this new thing is cool. We want to see it. But if, if we take that training, implement it, what will the outcome be? We think that we can then start a project to, uh, our, to, to, to automate this process. And, and, and our goal is to have, uh, you know, 10% reduction in time or uh, uh, repair time or whatever it might be. And I, I, would, I would recommend um, trying, to, trying to articulate what we're gonna do with the training because it is critical, it really is. From a, an Alan Lee point of view, if I can, I'd just completely back that up. Um, everything's around impact and, and change and, and where we wanna be kind of things, that outcome of it all. So yeah, it, it's good to hear that again. Sorry, Chris. Thank you, Yvette. Yes, it's a very, very difficult situation we uh, we are in, and uh, 
the main thing is to get access to these people. They are they all claim to be so busy that they can't see mm. me and and other people. That's the problem. It's making it's getting in there. Um, and well, all we have to do is to keep trying. I think. You know, Chris, there might be maybe maybe SETE can help with that. We have a lot of statistics on what it is that the outcomes have been. You know, if you don't have those outcomes, first of all, you might have some internally. We're doing this training because we want to accomplish X. In that case, you know, just just keep waving the flag for X. If you need some data, contact me on the side. Um, uh, happy to happy to see if I can help uh, gather some data for you that that talks about the benefits and the and the outcomes of training. Let's let's help each other as much as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy to. Cool. Um, so I see no more hands, and I. But oh. oh. Can you still hear me? My headphones have just changed. Can you still hear me? Hear me okay? Yep. Am I yep, back? Still here. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Cool. It's all right. Just in a flash up. Cool. Um, quick fire round, just probably to wrap things up, Yvette. So um, I'm just going to whistle through. Um, you mentioned a few bits about podcast books and stuff. So I've just got a few quick fire questions. First thing that comes to mind. So what's the last book you read? Um, the last book I read was a book that a friend of mine gave me, a colleague of mine, called The Basic Laws of, Stup of Human Stupidity. And it is a book I recommend for everybody. It's a huge bestseller that talks about how to uh, be a good person and, uh, and, and uh, make decisions that are win-win. It's, it's, it's a super quick read. Highly recommend it. It really is good. Cool. No, that's cool. I'm adding it to my reading list as we speak. A couple of more recommendations and just on some of the others. Um, favorite podcast? Uh, well, Chambers Talks, of course. <laughs> no, cool. Um, and then obviously from the article, maybe a more formal white paper, whatever it is, last interesting article you read. Um, I'm, what was the topic? I'm you don't have to say, go specific. When, when it comes to articles, that is just not going to be a technical answer. I am heartbroken over what I'm seeing in this world and everything I'm reading is about how can we all band together and, and, and look at what happened in Miami, the shootings, um, uh, COVID. It just, my heart goes out to humanity. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll skip that on the technical side and say uh, we, we have much to do to help each other right now. It's a much better answer than the technical one. Oh, absolutely. Um, so one more, and, and just around development, what's on your PDP? We've all got one, or should have. Um, what, uh, well, I would say um, the, the entire startup environment and, and, and uh, what's, you know, uh, investments and 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 timing uh all of that is is the definition of my pdp every day and uh and i think that uh i i have you know i come from a deep engineering and running large business environments and this whole uh every step about the small is fascinating and i'm constantly learning and uh love learning so that's that's much much to do there Cool. Um, and final one, and probably the trickiest of them all, um, okay. why is this word? Parting, bit of advice um, to wrap things up, what would it be? Any topic, anything, just final words of advice. Oh, I would say um, to, to all of us, we work in the best industry and it's, and it's going through massive change and we can accomplish anything for each and every one of our individual goals if we just put our mind to it and try. So uh, let's, let's go do it and, um, and, and, and just lead. Awesome. Um, so I've genuinely enjoyed that. I was a little bit nervous coming into this, um, but I have genuinely enjoyed that and um, really interesting and, and really kind of energizing. Um, so all I'll say is thank you from my point of view um, and, and on behalf of everyone that's kind of gets to listen into this. Um, that was really cool. Always so enjoy uh, participating and hope to see everybody in person again. And uh, thanks so much for inviting me and having me. Awesome. Thank you, Yvette. Um, so to wrap things up, I'm going to hand back over to Tony um, just for some parting words. We, we're pretty well on time as well, which is good. So, Tony, the floor is yours. Well, how do you follow those up? We've had three amazing times here. I don't even know how to put words to this. Starting with Mr. 
Burns, I mean, Mark, we put you on the spot. Sorry about all the questions. We tried. We really tried to put you out of it. You survived that one. So well done. Craig, so interesting to listen to. These are areas nobody wants to touch. Nobody wants to think about all of the exterior. That's nothing to do with us, but it is so important. Yvette, we knew it was going to be an amazing, inspirational time. You fulfilled that well and above. And of course, James, well done, mate. Really impressive, keeping all of these in check and keeping it running. It was an excellent day. I really enjoyed it. I also got some information, which I didn't know. I've also got some recommendations of books to read. Anything that has the title of stupidity in it must be good. Come on. It's a way of learning and moving forward. So the mistakes we make, they also should be there and should be done. Everybody should just own up to them. It makes it a lot easier. Then you don't have to find someone to blame. Soon we're looking forward to the autumn lecture, 7th of October, National Motorcycle Museum. Hopefully we'll all be there so we can get together and actually have the discussions and the networking on the side of here. We tried it a little bit today. Thank you, Reen. Thanks, Chris, for that. There's not a lot more to say than thank you, Melissa, for putting all of this together. And thank you, James, Yvette, Craig, and Mark. Really well done, all of you. I look forward to meeting all of you at some point in time. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And if you're in the Europeans, make sure you put your bet on the right team tonight, please. Sitting in Denmark at the moment, I've sort of got a 50-50 chance of winning. So please enjoy it all. Mark, would you like to say something? Uh, just thank you very much uh, for, again for the invite. I really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, thanks again for all those tough questions. Hopefully I did them justice. Really enjoyed today. Thanks for organizing. Yes, you did, Mark. Don't worry about that. We'll try and get you on again. And we'll try and prepare the questions starting from tomorrow. So we'll have plenty of time to give you loads of time that to think about. Okay. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> really well done, everyone. And thanks for being part of this webinar. Thank you all very much. Goodbye and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.